was it difficult to convince your parents because you also come from a background where both parents were government employees so i like to double down on the personal side of things were you introvert or extrovert while growing up and do you believe ki jo aapka initial friend circle hota hai in school college days that imp- also impacts your career decision sir you also talk a lot about ki customer se paise lena chahiye investor se nahi app download ho raha hai use ho raha hai without advertising exactly. and it's growing which is word of mouth hai which means thodi variety hai so maybe they feel something that the customer or the consumer wants Hi everyone welcome to new episode of growth cast podcast today i have with me sanjeev bikchandani sir who is founder of nokri.com and is also called as father of a startup ecosystem in india aaj ka podcast bahut special hai because we are going to interact with sir and discuss with him his career principles what he looks for when he is investing in his startups and also understand the journey behind zomato and policy bazaar stay till the end because in this episode you are going to get nuggets of wisdom jisko aap apne career mein apply kar sakte hain aur aage grow kar sakte hain Hi Sanjeev sir welcome to Growthcast podcast and thank you so much for joining in uh first of all i'd like to understand what was your initial career journey how everything started for you thank you for inviting me first of all uh i began to work uh in the corporate sector my first job actually straight after college so i was 1984 i was 21 years old um uh, and i happened to get a job at the in an advertising agency lintas okay uh in the 80s it was very hard to get a job just after a ba uh, there weren't there wasn't this corporate sector boom private sector boom uh, typically you had to be professionally qualified which basically meant you were a ca or an engineer or an mba and that's how you got a job uh, maybe 15 or 20 people from my college would get a job straight from campus others would do the ma they do mba they do phds they write the civil services they go and study law so it was not common uh, for people to work straight after ba um when i was very fortunate uh, you know lintas came uh, there was an entrance exam group discussion interview i cleared the process uh, and uh, you know there were two three interviews actually and i i got the job offer uh, to work as a trainee in the client services department client servicing department of lintas and i spent three years there and to my mind uh, those were very very uh, good years for learning for myself to advance for growing uh, and i really learned a lot of the qualities that stood me in good stead over the years and decades i imbibed them there um, and 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 uh, i had also at the same time got a opportunity to do an mba but i did not take that uh, i said i'd let me work for some time and then do my mba which is what i did uh so after 3 years at lintas i did my mba i studied management at imm dawat and then i joined a company called hmm uh, today it's called glaxo smith kline right sir. after many mergers and you know name changes uh i was in marketing i was working on the brand holix uh i was there for a little under 2 years um uh, and that also was a great learning experience but after 5 years of working in two multinationals I kind of figured that this is not the career I want where for the next 25 30 40 years in a as a as a executive uh, as a professional manager in a large multinational corporation and so I quit and said I do my own startup uh, this was in uh, 1990 um, and uh, I was 26 years old 27 years old uh, so so at the age of 26 or 27 I had 5 years experience I had uh, got a post graduation in management and i said let me break out on my own and let's see what happens was it difficult to convince your parents because you also come from a background where both parents were government employees well my mother's homemaker my father was in the government as a doctor no i must say that uh, my parents have been um, very very supportive of me and all the experimentation and all the wrong decisions that i took uh, they allowed me to take them and uh, proceed in life uh you know i had got into engineering college after school uh i chose to not go and i instead went to study economics in delhi university st stephen's college uh and you know i'm from a family of doctors and engineers right uh, you know so nobody you know uh, nobody did a ba right no uh, you know ba was meant for girls were you elder one or the youngest i was one? the youngest 
people. So my brother went to IIT Kanpur, uh, then I'm Ahmedabad, then he did his PhD from Stanford University, he's now a professor at UCLA. Uh, my sister was older than him and she studied science in college. Um, and I uh, was the youngest and uh, it was expected I'd do, you know, either medicine or... Follow anything. footsteps yeah. of your sibling. Uh, and I uh, was fortunate enough to clear the IIT entrance exam and got into IIT. But when I went for my counseling, you know, they did a medical test and they told me you're partially colorblind. And uh, they said, look, it's fine, you can join, but some careers and some uh, uh, courses may be close to you. Uh, and that's the thought for the first time, why do I want to study engineering? Right. Uh, and after thinking, I realized I don't want to study engineering. And so I went and uh, studied economics instead. If uh, medical test, mein hota, so Might be. I, I would have got, become an engineer. Got. Okay, I would not have, I would not have thought. Right. So, I uh, thought, I thought, I economics. Karte. So, that's what I did, study economics in college. And then, um, I, I worked for three years and then did my MBA. And sir, you did MBA at the time when you were not so much output driven. Nahi you need to be really passionate if you want to do MBA. I assume it is engineering ki wave. Thi. So, how you took that decision that you MBA to do MBA? No, actually, studying management uh, you know, from a good institution was very popular even then. Achha, in the 80s also. Uh, because you would get a good job. right? And uh, several people in my class were engineers. So, engineering after MBA. Karte. Achha, that trend is still running today. Uh -huh. also. Uh -huh. So, uh, so it, I mean, uh, and of course, there were lots of plenty of engineers who went overseas. Right. For, uh, and uh, around that time, uh, you know, this uh, software programming, H1B visas, all that was uh, increasing as a trend. So, that is also an option of engineering. Uh, but, uh, you know, uh, enough people came to IM Ahmedabad in my batch also. Got it. So, I like to double down on the personal side of things. Were you introvert or extrovert while growing up? And do you believe that your initial friend circle hota in school, college days, that imp also impacts your career decision? So, look, I was an extrovert with my friends, but I was an introvert outside my friend circles. Okay. So, I was not this great public speaker. I would not go out and make friends with other people easily. But if, you know, with my friends in my class, in my school, in my neighborhood, uh, I was uh, an extrovert. Got it. And sir, is there any problem statement job chote se dekhte aare and you feel ki this needs to be solved but it still is not solved? Maybe you'd like to take a stab at it sometime in future? No, I mean, look, I'm a kind of happy go lucky guy who just went along in life and uh, do thing karli mane. I don't think too much. Got it, got it. And sir, what was your relationship with money when you were growing up? How you looked at it? Well, uh, so I was grew up in a middle class family. Father was a government servant, mother was a homemaker. So it's not as if there was significant money in the house. Right. So growing up, uh, it, it was not an affluent lifestyle. Right. But but we got by. I mean, uh, you know, uh, there were no foreign holidays. Uh, there were in fact uh, some domestic holidays, but they were mostly to meet family. Right. Grandparents were in Pune. We'd go there once a year. Right. Uh, and so on. Uh, so, uh, the relationship with money was, uh, yeah, there isn't enough. It will be nice to have more, uh, but it's okay. And was there any gift or something that you got in small time that you thought that, yeah, this is something that I really like? No, I cannot say that. You see, uh, in the 60s and the 70s, I was born in 1963, and even in the 80s, uh, you see, it was, a, it was a scarcity economy in India. Right, sir. Uh, imported products were always better than domestic products, or so was the perception. Right. Right. So when uncles and aunts came from overseas, they would carry gifts to everyone. Oh. So we would eagerly await that they, you know when they're coming that they'll open their suitcase and mm -hmm. we'll get something. Uh, I mean, I have memories of that. Uh, but other than that, I mean, you know, we were reasonably satisfied with what we had. Got it. I think haan, sir, scene has drastically changed. If you don't get things in 10 minutes, nahi milti, people become impatient in quick commerce world. I think back then people were more patient also regarding things because sari cheeze, itni easily available nahi thi, the way they are available. Right? When I became an entrepreneur, there was no mobile phones. Right, sir. There was an eight year waiting list to get a, a landline, a telephone line. From BSNL? From BSNL. Hmm. 
or that time MTNL. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, there was a eight year waiting list to get a gas connection. There was a 17 year waiting list to buy a scooter, a two wheeler. Right? When I say scarcity economy, that's what I mean. There was one TV channel. It was not 24 by 7. Hmm. Just a few hours a day. Uh, TV for the most part in 1982 was black and white. Yes, sir. So you were lucky if you had a phone in the house. Uh, you were... You somehow found a way to you know, buy a, to get access to transport. Right? You mostly traveled by the DC bus. A student's pass was 12 rupees 50 paise in Delhi. And that was your lifeline. It gave you unlimited travel on DTC buses. And so you spent 12 rupees 50 paise to get a DTC pass, bus pass, and then that was freedom and Azadi. Because you could travel anywhere in Delhi with that 12 rupees 50 paise. So it was a different era. Right. And things have completely changed. You took a leap of faith and you plunged into entrepreneurship. I'd like to ask this question from point of view of somebody who is in their mid-30s doing well in a corporate job. And unko pass koi idea hai. And I keep on hearing this with all of my teammates and other people. Ki water cooler whisper hote hai. Ki kuch apna karna hai, apna karna hai. Pak log wo decision le nahi paate because they feel a lot is at risk. So what are, is your advice to such people? Ki if you want to start something, what is the framework or mental model you should have for evaluation? Um, so yeah, there's no general rule. Okay, but, but I would say a couple of things. Be frugal. If you're personally frugal, it means you have to pay for it. and you start a company to do some business, then even with a little bit of revenue, you will survive. Because you have to pay for it. So first principle, be frugal. Second principle, stay close to your customer. Understand your, what the customer is looking for. And is not getting. And what, therefore, what's the unsolved problem? And if you, if you solve that problem, Chances are the customer will buy, you will not have to sell. Right. So if you're in a situation where the customer is buying without you having to sell, you know, you will get some sales happening. Right, sir. Because you're producing something, delivering something which the customer needs. Customer Hopefully you'll survive. So I think sir, the role of insight then plays a very important uh, role here. Ki aapko pata hona ki consumer ki insight kya hai. Okay, I problem point and then you need to solve for it, right? Yeah, so I mean, my team Charles uh, Harandit now, three examples I give, four examples. Uh, and uh, so first is Nokri. I used to observe in my last job in HMM that uh, when the office copy of Business India would come in, everybody read it from the back. Because there were 35 to 40 pages of appointment ads at the back of the magazine. Right, sir. And sometimes they would not even read the articles. They read the appointment and pass it on. Right? And then they would discuss, there's this job going here, a job going there. What do you think? And these are people who are in a good job in a multinational, not too many options in Delhi. Uh-huh. Uh, when I saw the internet for the first time seven years later, that's when I revived this insight. And uh, I said, if we just take jobs from newspapers and magazines around the country and put them all in the net, traffic would come. Because people, sure. want, people yeah. want to know about jobs. Huh. And that's what we did. From Akbar Latte, uh, from all over the country. And appointment ads from Apne Shabdum Dalte. A traffic other. If but traffic on Elagya, people began to get responses referring to Nokri, even though they're not advertising Nokri. Then people began to approach us. Sri Sab Hamari Pazi Che jobs and Akbar Dalini. Abdaldoge, I'm not a passenger with Dalini. So we began to charge money. And that is how slowly, slowly we built a revenue stream. But it started off with insight, which led to traffic, which led to clients. So I speak my question. I mean, uh, I was watching your interview. So if you go to the future, if you go to the future, you ask someone, what is TAM, what is SAM, what is SOM? But at that time, the internet penetration was not so high. Nahi. Tab bhi is insight ke basis pe aapne company puri found ki. So at that time, you had all these terms, thought or did you say that the product is good, you can make it better. So I had not even thought about it. Us time, I had not even thought of venture capital. There was no venture capital also. Right, My simple idea was, that if 1,000 companies 
हमें हर महीने पाँच सौ रुपये दे रहे एक जॉब के लिए वो पाँच लाख रुपए मिलेंगे हाँ साल के साठ लाख हो जाएंगे नहीं हमारे खर्चे हैं बीस तीस लाख तो प्रॉफिट है चालीस लाख का प्रॉफिट मिल जाएगा मेरी तनखा निकल जाएगी माई सोल एम्बिशन वॉज समाउ ऑन सैलरी Uh, and that's how we started with that aim and goal in mind very final objective uh, no tam no nothing no 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 cac all sub these all terms that came later right sir right uh, so really map you know when we when we wanted to raise venture capital 3 years later because competition had come and it had venture capital so i have i had gone to meet four investors different four different investors right sir one of them i got three term sheets we got three term sheets one of them told me told us that uh you know i think you you're a great you pitch really well you're a great guy but i won't invest and i said why not and he said that's because you tell me what is the total size of the print advertising market in india for appointments hmm. i said look i don't know maybe 400 crores maybe 450 crores i don't know he said, okay fine let's assume it's 450 crores now what is the price difference between you know, ad and print and what you are charging on nokri i said one is 2000 so he says yeah then to boss you will uh, if you get 100% market share you will shrink the market to 45 lakhs hmm so your maximum sale of 45 lakhs so i won't invest in you if he was going by tam and market size all that and you are simply creating a new category right sir okay uh and uh, so he didn't invest so people take all sorts of uh, decisions sometimes right sometimes wrong uh and we have never looked at tam so much especially if you are trying to create a you know when you are trying to invest behind or do a category creating business you see mujhe yaad hai in the first round in zomato i moved the proposal to the board to invest 4 and a half crores in zomato and two three directors told me you know restaurants they are mom and pop operations उनके पास एडवर्टाइजिंग बजट तो है नहीं कुछ देर नॉट फॉर फोर फाइव सिटीज इन इंडिया हैव सो मेनी रेस्टोरेंट्स विच यू विल दे वुड नीड अ डिस्टिंग सर्विस राइट तो संजीव आई थिंक दिस कैन बी अ ट्वेंटी क्रो बिजनेस मे बी थर्टी क्रो बिजनेस मैक्स आई यू शो यू वॉन्ट इन्वेस्ट और मैंने बोला लुक आई डोट नो हाउ लार्ज द बिजनेस बी बट दे आर गुड पीपल डूइंग अ गुड थिंग इट्स अ यूजफुल प्रोडक्ट फोर पॉइंट फाइव क्रोज नॉट लार्ज ऑफ मनी लेट्स पुट द मनी इन एंड सी वॉट हैपन्स राइट ऑन दैट बेसिस वी वेंट है so tam is often misleading got it sir you also talk a lot about ki customer se paise lena chahiye investors se nahi and uh, agar india ki baat kare to bahut hi price sensitive market hai matlab personal experience se bhi i have seen ki if you are offering something good and you try to price it higher log utna nahi aate to is price sensitive market mein agar koi consumer facing startup bana raha hai to use to thoda to burn karna hi padega but isme what are your views ki how they can be true truly innovative if you truly differentiated and the customer needs your product right they will find you they'll smell you out they'll pay you right because need hai aur koi hai nahi you are differentiated and innovative wo aapko aise denge uh if you uh, unfortunately when you raise venture capital uh, you become in a hurry right to jaldi karna hai so let me give it free let me advertise let me get traffic then let me get usage then on that basis my next round you know you hit a different treadmill right uh it's a much better and safer thing to do to actually charge customers for what you know they're using from you because if they don't want to pay then are you sure your product is good then are they using you only because they're free yes sir i think a lot of companies that were relying solely on cashback wala thing have now taken a back seat because of value add log zyada dekhte hain instead of cashback or cashback ke basis pe kuch kuch to startups even i have seen ki ekdam crazy amount aapne 1 rupaye ka saman order kiya kya kar raha hai 400 500 and it's being delivered basically for free we are not able to sustain post 2021 uh, yeah so that's not good that's not sensible business right sir so uh, you have invested in companies such as zomato policy bazaar jinki growth kafi phenomenal rahi hai at the same time they are known for their good culture also so what are your views if somebody is trying to scale up how they can ensure ki at least work culture and employee centricity is at place at the same time when you have bigger aspirations 
So I think uh, a lot depends on the founders uh, because in the beginning, the organization culture and values will reflect the way the founders are and how they think. Right. They will hire certain kinds of people. They will encourage certain kinds of behavior and discourage certain other kinds of behavior. Right. So I think uh, they, they, they will try and ensure that the organization does not do something that's inconsistent with the values. Right. So I think a lot depends on the founders and then the senior management team. From there it trickles down. Uh, and I don't want to pay too much emphasis on culture strategy because ultimately, you know, as a startup, you've got to move fast, get things done, and that's more important. Right. But at the same time, you can't ignore it completely. Okay. And if, if uh, a company has good culture, uh, culture that the employees feel comfortable working in, uh, it's because it started from the founders. Right. Sir, and how was it for you when you scale up karna shuru kiya, you went for hiring? I think that time government job were considered most prestigious jobs, stack rank mein top. Pe rehte the, to convince oh, people. Hmm. Government jobs are still the top for most people. Right. Not the kind of people who you may meet working in startups or right. new age companies right. or digital companies. But for most of India, government jobs are still the most aspirational. Now, what we did was we were a very small company. We were 9, 12, 15, 16 people. And then we raised venture capital. Once we raised venture capital, one of the money came. The other, our targets of growth became different. Right. Uh, and so we began to hire people. Right. Now, you obviously, if you want to scale from 9, 16 people to 300 people in two years' time or three years' time, it's not going to be happening by by, it won't happen by hiring people at the entry level and then training them and they grow. Right, sir. You were hired laterally. Now we hired laterally and then people came in from other companies with their own notions of, you know, good culture, bad culture, what is right, what is wrong, hmm. values, all that. But as long as we were hiring the right people, we were, get, we were getting an amalgamation of various cultures which became our culture eventually. Right. Right? And that's how it worked. But if people are basically decent and honest, uh, it is okay. Got it. And sir, if we talk about hiring these days, how you see that in 2024, mein ab kya shift hai? during that time, was it much more that you need to have hard skills? Now the focus is more on soft skills as well as hard skills? No, nee, uh, none of this is new. You need soft skills and hard skills there as right. well. Uh, I think I see a few things that are different. Uh, when I got my first job, we were grateful to get a job right. and we didn't have too many options. Right, sir. So, it's not as if you're going to change jobs after six months, one year, two years. You're going to do what it takes to hang out to the job that you've got. Right? Uh, that has changed. Uh, I see a number of young people okay to take a gap, okay to leave a company after six months, one, one year. Uh, and go to the next company. Uh, so that is one thing that has changed. That uh, the tenure of a person, the time horizon a person, you know, has in his own head that I'll spend so much time here. Uh, that has changed. I think the acceptance of an imperfect workplace is a lot lower now than it was 30, 40 years ago. Right. Right. Uh, and you know, uh, so I think that has also changed. And sir, one question that followers were uh, asking me to ask you is salary negotiation piece. So, were students or freshers during your time also able to negotiate salaries? No chance. No chance. You, were, you joined as a trainee. You were told this is the salary offering trainees and take it or leave it. Got it. And sir, if uh, somebody in today's date wants to negotiate salary, what are two or three tips you would like to give to them? to be a, become a better salary negotiator during interview rounds? See, my submission is at the entry level. In general, most companies will have standard bands. Right. right? They, they, I, you can't get two extra the next guy in the same job. Right, sir. That won't happen. Uh, so my advice to young people is, get into a job. If you've not had passport, get into a job somehow. Get some work experience under your belt. 
because as you get work experience, uh, you will find that you know your skills are improving and developing, and then you can think of what to do next. But right now, somehow, get some experience. Got it. Got it. So I'll move to the next question, sir. So whenever you see a founder pitching to you, they might be showing you a projection of future, and that future might or might not hold true. So how is basis pe kaise evaluate karte ho? See, you look at two three things. Ki right now, where they are today. Uh, is there any evidence of what we call uh, natural traction? Ki sab uh, traffic aa raha hai, app download ho raha hai, use ho raha hai, without advertising. Got it. That and it's growing, which means word of mouth hai, which means thodi variety hai. So maybe they've built something that the customer or the consumer wants. Right. That's the first evidence. Second is you judge a team. Uh, how good are they? How committed are they? Will they stay for the long haul? Uh, will they be good with people? Can they attract talent? Do they seem honest? Um, will they treat minority shareholders well? As the company grows larger and increases in headcount, can they can they run a large team? Now sometimes these are judgment calls you're taking over the future, right? And sometimes you get them wrong, right? But you still have to make those calls. And sir, how well placed are you compared to US-based VC firms? Because they, I assume, chase a timeline of 10 year, 12 year. Compared to your way of investing, I think is completely different from their way of investing. Well, uh, India needs patient capital. I, you know, we always believe that. Uh, look, if you're a VC, right? Ultimately, you want an exit. Right, sir. Uh, in India, may strategic sales are not happening that frequently at valuations that uh, a VC would be happy with. Right, sir. Uh, IPOs take maybe 12 to 15 years. If your fund life is 10 years, then there's a mismatch. Right, sir. And you may have a challenge getting an exit in time for in time for the life during the lifetime of your fund. Right, sir. And this creates a problem for early stage investors. Um, we, if you're investing from the balance sheet, uh, you know, there is no time horizon. Even our funds are 12 plus 2 year funds. So we, we've given it enough time. Right. Uh, it helps us compared to where we would have been had we had a 10 year, 10 year, 8 year fund. Right, sir. And sir, so do you see yourself venturing into other upcoming markets as well? Your focus will be on India market only. Our focus is going to be in India. And Nokri also may be venturing out of two different countries because it, it's become such a big player in India. Maybe try out newer markets. Um, so we are there in the Middle East. Okay. But we don't have plans for any other country. And so initially, we thought that since this is getting traction in India, so let's go outside. Bhi. No, we understood very early on that uh, look, uh, internet classifieds is a winner take all market. So if we are strong here in India and have beaten all international competition that has come in, which we have, then chances are there's a strong player elsewhere who will beat us when you go there. Right. Because if there's already a winner in a particular country, uh, for us to go outside and win is, is not going to be easy. I think you need a lot of lo local expertise also understanding of market to... These are network effect markets. If you network effect is going on, you can't disrupt it easily. Huh. Because huh, I have also seen many other players coming to India, but Nokri basically is able to hold its position because the trust has also been built. And that trust is not going to be built because yeah. your career is at stake. Yeah. Yeah. So I like to switch gears. Recent economic survey revealed that one out of two Indian graduates are unemployable. They don't they don't have the basic skills to get a job. So what do you feel is broken in our education system that needs to be fixed? This is not a new phenomenon. In the 80s also, 90s also, this is the same thing. Achha. That uh, our college education does not prepare us for the workplace. Uh, I think uh, employ employment skills are best learned on the job. So, if you have an apprenticeship or internship program, right, hopefully 
यू यू लर्न समथिंग यू आर इंटर्न राइट सरकार अब बोल रही है कि सब इंटर्न लो इफ लॉर्ड ऑफ पीपल इंटर्नशिप्स आई थिंक यू पिकअप स्किल्स गॉट इट एंड सर एजुकेशन में भी ऑल्सो नीड की कैरिकुलम नीड्स टू बी रिवेम सेम थिंग इज बींग टॉट सिंस लास्ट टेन फिफ्टीन ट्वेंटी ईयर्स you to curriculum needs to be continuously revamped but but without practical experience you can't get employment skills employ employ uh, skills of of employment as sir what role you see private sector playing here because government colleges anyways are there but this problem is still persisting ki skill wali issue aa raha do private sector also need to double down maybe with more institutions more programs institutions to chahiye but uh, I think they need to give more internships. So basically, companies should start embracing internship as a get way, get way to get people inside the yes, organization, yes. and then take things forward, right, sir? So, uh, talking about AI, uh, how big you feel that it's a threat for current job seekers who are there in the? We are waiting and watching. We can't say for sure, but we are waiting and watching. Uh, and if i talk about certain industries where you see ki AI ka role thoda bada hoga ya impactful hoga, those are the industries something you have in mind. I think it's more the industry, it's roles. Roles, okay. Within within organizations, so every company may kitchen ko role play impact hoga. But AI will also create jobs. Now, question is that uh, is it going to create more jobs than than are lost? Is it going to create more jobs before those jobs are lost? And those people may or may not get those jobs, the new jobs. Right. So I think that is where again up skilling or khud ko train karna becomes very important. Yeah. yeah. And so I also interact with lot of people who are in the job market. भी एवरीबडी इज आउटकम फोकस्ड कि यार मैंने अप्लाई किया तो मुझे नौकरी चाहिए पर स्किल डेवलप करने पे कोई ध्यान नहीं देता सो यू हैव अ डिस्टिंग्विश्ड करियर आपने थ्रू आउट कैसे खुद को आप स्किल रखा व्हाट आर सम ऑफ द थिंग्स दैट यू कीप ऑन डूइंग टू करंट डेट आल्सो एक्चुअली आई वाज वेरी फॉर्चूनेट आई वर्क इन ऑर्गेनाइजेशन इन सिचुएशंस वेयर द जॉब इटसेल्फ टॉट मी मेरे को कोई कोर्स नहीं करना पड़ा राइट राइट इफ यू वर्क इन अ गुड ऑर्गेनाइजेशन द जॉब इटसेल्फ विल टीच यू इफ सो इफ यू जॉइन एज अ सेल्स पर्सन लेट्स से इन नौकरी you know and you're a, you're a trainee with no past experience in sales if you're smart and hard working and committed uh, hopefully within 6 months you'll become a, a good sales person you won't get a certification but you'll be a good sales person right as so a how you keep yourself updated with latest trend what's happening mostly by meeting and talking to younger people okay so you know i have the the average age in a company is 28 or 29 years okay sir. right uh, i'm 61 uh-huh. Okay, there's so much I don't know. I'm outdated in many many ways, but I learn by just talking to younger people. Okay, and do you read also maybe some books? What is? So I read, uh, uh, not as much as I used to, and not as much as I should, but I do read. Uh, but mostly I listen because I now have enough people to talk to. I think sir, active listening is a trait जो आज के time में बहुत ज़्यादा missing है. Uh, sir, I also wanted to touch base on MBA education. There are alternate MBA education startups which are coming up. Kya apna courses kalo maybe twelve month, eighteen months. We will put you at par with a MBA graduate. So do you feel MBA as an education will become redundant, or it is something that will sustain? No, I think it will not become redundant. I think, uh, but it has to be from a quality institution, in a quality program. So you see, it's it's one thing to say I'll study six hours a week management on the weekends maybe online. it's not bad you can do it alongside your job and maybe if you committed you learn something but your mba ka experience that fully residential immersive with your classmates your batchmates in study groups in the class on projects uh wala ko hai right so i think there is actually no substitute for a high quality real mba program but those programs will be few so people need to maybe learn more on the job because people making to those programs will be very few in number when they also expanding in in in, in admission strengths uh when i went to i'm and there were 175 people in the batch right now they are 430 right sir so batch is also more than doubled so i uh, now like to touch base on indian startup ecosystem which are some of the sectors that you are bullish on for next 3 to 5 years you see them doing really well so i have never tried to predict Thanks, okay sir. Uh, but i would say first as an education get yourself a great foundation right of your fundamental skills and knowledge uske baad you can adapt to any sector right but if i look at the companies we are seeing 
इस अक्रॉस रेंज ऑफ सेक्टर्स फिन टेक भी है हेल्थ टेक भी है यू नो ऑल सॉर्ट्स ऑफ यू नो यू नो स्किल्स आते हैं बट इफ यू लुक एट टेक्निकल स्किल्स देन यू नो ऑब्वियसली ए आई मशीन लर्निंग राइट नाउ वेरी वेरी मच इन डिमांड राइट सर अ स्किल दैट हैज नेवर गॉन आउट ऑफ फैशन इज सेलिंग स्किल्स ओके इफ यू कैन बी अ गुड सेल्स पर्सन राइट यू विल ऑलवेज बी इन डिमांड राइट सर राइट इफ यू आर अ गुड हाई क्वालिटी इंजीनियर on the software side you will always be in demand right right so the real issue is quality as opposed to which sector no matter what you choose you have to make sure that you are working very hard at it getting good at it and a very proficient and are really good at what you do got it sir i'd like to understand your take on quick commerce so there is blinkit there is zepto now recent news is that ola is also venturing into it so everybody wants to grab a piece of pie here but do you think there will be a ultimate winner here or there will be two or three big players who will be running the show uh the hit the probably will be an ultimate winner but that might take 10 years right sir uh till then there will be several try okay. uh i think what blinkit has shown and and a disclosure obviously you know that you know we are investors in in the company right, right sir what blinkit has shown is that you can grow you can become large and you can be profitable in e-commerce in india right sir uh and that's a remarkable achievement uh we're kind of hoping that uh, blinkit continues to grow on the same 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 path same trajectory and if that does happen then i think it will become a very very successful company as so do you see that foreign players who come and try to dominate india like i was reading a recent news ki amazon has lost significant market share to flipkart flipkart is doing really well so you need to be localized you need to have a strong local leadership and local entrepreneurs that can crack e-commerce but the uh, flipkart is also a foreign company it's owned by walmart right sir so both flipkart and amazon are now international companies yes sir uh, the origins of flipkart were in the nandar ship right sir but right now it's a foreign company and sir if i you have to choose between founders coming from great background great credential versus somebody having a execution muscle which one would you give more priority to so it's not either or right see a uh, great pedigree helps helps in several ways uh, it opens doors for you it helps you attract talent you know it perhaps make you you know intrinsically better equipped for some some jobs uh, but if you are not good at execution no matter what your pedigree is you're going to fail right uh if you don't have pedigree but a good execution you can still succeed so i think execution you know wins always uh pedigree helps got it got it as a what kind of startups info edge ventures generally invest in to is, is there any particular categories that you look at no we, what we do is that we meet a thousand startups a quarter okay and that's a huge number uh, there are 15 20 people right? okay uh and uh who, who do this job and then we may invest in three or four selection it's basically very low yeah well we like to meet everyone because uh, hmm, we want to see what's going on right right uh, and who knows we might be missing something right uh, we have our criteria for filtering is up like i told you you know hmm. natural attraction uh, you know quality of team what's competition doing is it you know path breaking right is it creating a new category right okay so we look at all those things and then we figure out you know what to invest behind and the sectors could be any within tech within tech right and what was first pitch of zomato and policy bazaar do you do you remember those pitches i still have the first deck of zomato somewhere uh, policy bazaar did not even have a deck acha how we, did that conversation went didn't have a product okay they had an idea okay S- uh so yashi daya came to me and uh, he said that uh, i'm willing to bet you're paying 60% more for your car insurance than you need to right that's to be silly you know i got my car from a reputed car dealer he sold me the insurance it came with the car bundle uh it's a public sector company that's that's the insurance provider right Uh, there is no way you know it will be a I, i would have been overcharged to that extent he said look the issue is not being overcharged the issue is that different companies price the same risk differently 
and therefore they believe they're giving you a fair price. But the other guy may give you a cheaper price. He took my car details, he came back within 20 minutes, and here are eight quotes. And sure enough, the the lowest quote was 40% lower than what I was paying. Oh. So I was really I was really surprised. And that's when you woke up and said, okay, fine, it'll jaga. Okay. So there was a great illustration of a very powerful value prop. It's up it's not price differentiation of that. Or They will compare and then buy. He said yes, they will. Zomato was called Foodie Bay. It was nice. already running. Uh, the great thing about Zomato was that it had uh, all the menu cards. And I found it useful, Hitesh found it useful, we would both be using it. And that's when we felt that, you know, why not talk to them? We spoke to them and, uh, you know, the first question I asked was the idea was to put all the menu cards. There were other restaurants inside, but they did not have menu cards. But like, so they had, had all the menu cards. And he told me the story about how he was working in Bain Consulting, in the Bain, Bain office. There was a cafeteria, but they could not serve lunch. So to make life easy for employees and colleagues, uh, you know, the admin team had put maybe menu cards, delivery menu cards of roughly 70 or 80 restaurants that would deliver to that location. They would put them in one file folder and kept them there in the cafeteria. He says, Ek baje lumbi line lagti to access that file folder, you get over 30 seconds, decide, order, come back after one hour, the pay money, and the order came, and then eat. It's a waste of time. Yeah. So I just came one, one Saturday and scanned all those menu cards and uploaded them on my personal page on the office internet. And within three days, the IT infra guy came to me and said, what have you done? Why is 98% of the internal traffic going to your personal page? Then it dropped. I realized that uh, aggregation of menu cards got value. Right. And I began to aggregate that and I lost the site. Now, this is a clear customer insight based on which that product was created. That convinced us. He is a good thing. Sir, uh, talking about Zomato only, so it started with menu card. Now it's a complete stack solution for food tech. So, how as a founder, you or maybe Dupinder have this thing that you have to pivot to this category, this category? No, look, the Dupinder has been doing this for Dupinder and the others at Zomato were always trying to move ahead. They were always innovating, differentiating, expanding, hmm. growing. Initially, the growth was geographical. They went to 14 countries. Right. COVID was they had contracted. 2000, but 2018, they said they would launch food delivery in India. Because we got a competition. So they launched it and they executed well and made it work. And through COVID, it's what saved the company. And now it has shifted to Blinkit be acquired earlier because when you are into food delivery, you also want to solve for last mile. You can order frequency, increase, then you pivot to that direction. No, it's actually that's a totally different business. It's a totally different delivery team. So it's not as if the delivery team key synergies exploit over here. Know how exploit over there. We know how to deliver, we know how to manage a delivery fleet. But do de those those blinkit delivery fleet hai, or those Zomato are different. Okay, separate out. Hai. Got it. So do you feel that India has no merger acquisitions nahi hai, so IPO is the only part to profitability for any startups if they want to maybe well, scale up? Yeah, give see, you can mostly IPO only after you make a profit. Technically, you can before you make a profit, but now increasingly, I think, you profit before IPO. So, IPO is not a path to profit, but IPO is a path to access to capital, exit for investors, uh, you know, getting valuation for the company, all of those things. Got it. So, is there any non-Indian startup that you really appreciate and want to India maybe replicate or maybe... No, not replicate, but some of the companies that we have always admired, right, would be... A, a Google and Amazon. Yeah. These two. Yeah, I mean, they are globally great companies. You try and learn from them. I think space also is a sector that has huge potential in India. If we talk about talking about US, where Elon Musk has launched and we also have a proficiency in India. Mm -hmm. So, space tech, yes. 
the challenge is that there's only one client. It's the government of India. Right. So you may have a market problem. Got it, got it. And sir, if you have to start up today, which are some of the sectors that you would choose? Yeah, how would you go about it starting up today? I would uh, not choose a sector. I would just observe consumers. And right. Say, you know, consumer ka chata hai. Wo consumer ka demand kar hai. Can, can, I, can we supply that? Got it. And uh, sir, agar aap meri jaga pe aaj hote, ab job ek achhi established job rehti. तो छोड़ने से पहले क्या दो चीजें या तीन चीजें आप डिसाइड करते कि अच्छा ये हो गया और दिस इज द टाइम व्हेन आई कैन मेक अ पिवट जो आपने 80s में किया था या नहीं देखिए यू आर मैरिड यू हैव अ चाइल्ड राइट सो आई वुड कंसीडर ऑल द रिस्क केयरफुली पर्सनल फाइनेंशियल सोशल राइट आई वुड लुक एट माय सेविंग्स एंड ओनली देन वुड आई डिसाइड Got it. So life stage also plays a very important role stable. in you taking yeah. this decision. Yeah. And I move to the final question. Uh, people on the page also have a lot of questions around being financially well-being, uh, being maybe financially prudent. So how you went about your savings initially when you started up and how? So savings is not easy. But I began to do second and third jobs. Right. I would teach at business schools on weekends around Delhi uh, to earn some. Some pocket money. Uh, I got a second job as a journalist part time. I began to write also, uh, publish a couple of books, wrote some articles. Uh, so I was also doing a second and third job to somehow get some money to survive. So side hustle was always your thing that did need to go on. Side hustle while I became an entrepreneur, not when I was my job. And how you manage time between this uh, hectic work? Because Nokri was also scaling up and family was also there. How you are able to strike this balance? Balance, Thani. So you would expand your day. You would work sixteen, eighteen hours a day. Got it. And family time, you then used to take out maybe for trips or bahar jana tha. We couldn't afford much, right? Uh, so a trip would be a weekend in Kasoli, a weekend in Bharatpur, not very expensive. Got it. There, there were no foreign holidays. Thank you so much for taking out the time, man. This was really, really meaningful. A lot of people on the page are mid and early stage career professionals. I hope that they get their nuggets of wisdom. Just go up in a career. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. अगर ये एपिसोड अच्छा लगा हो तो चैनल को आप सब्सक्राइब करो कमेंट सेक्शन में मेरे को बताओ कि कौन से अगले गेस्ट को हमें बुलाना चाहिए जो आपको पर्सनल और प्रोफेशनल ग्रोथ में हेल्प करेगा आप बताओगे उनको हम रीच आउट करेंगे उन्हें चैनल पे लेके आएंगे इस वीडियो को लाइक करें शेयर करें अपने फ्रेंड्स के साथ और कंटिन्यू वॉचिंग ग्रोथ कास्ट टू लेवल अप प्रोफेशनली